creeping is necessary. The carburetor control cables, which pass around numerous pulleys, are followed from the cockpit to the nacelle firewall. There, they connect with rods to the carburetor. Improper tension of cables will offset the mechanism which they control. If any binding is apparent, a search must be made until the source is located. Rods coming through firewall fair leads should work. Carburetor mixture and throttle linkage, rods, bolts and nuts, must be tight and properly cotter keyed. Governor cable terminal bolts must also be tight and properly eased. Always inspect governor pulley for cable alignment and freedom from rubbing. Examine oil coupling for leak and see that the governor head is secure. Governor cable tension is set at 20 pounds. Although each engine has over 20,000 square inches of cooling fin surface, it is important that no fins be broken. Broken fins result in uneven cooling and engine damage. Each engine has 18 spark plugs. Should a plug pop out while the airplane is in flight, a terrific vibration would result. Nuts holding cables to ignition harness are tightened if necessary. The propeller hub nuts must be secure. Nicks or dents in the propeller blade will throw it out of balance. If not repairable, blades or propeller should be replaced. When inspecting seats in the cockpit, look for breaks or cracks which may foul parachutes or tear clothing. All moving parts of the seat are lubricated. Free movement of the pilot's seat is absolutely necessary. The next consideration is the safety belt. See that lacing is not or torn. Inspect buckles for proper fanning. The mechanic operates the carburetor air cooler control, which regulates temperature of 50 tons of air every flying hour. Removal of the aileron lock pin permits operation of the control wheel. The tail surf lock is also released. Foot pedals operate the rudder. Cables from the pedals of the rudder pass through the fuselage to the tail assembly. During cable inspection, all accessible parts are clean. Care is taken not to remove the rust protective cable. With all moving parts and brakes aligned, the huge rudder will operate with ease. Pedals in neutral position should bring the rudder also into neutral. Rudder hinges are inspected for loose hinge books or bearings. Also for possible binding or lack of lubrication. There are 180 of cable in the rudder control system. The rudder trim tab control wheel is mounted on the cockpit floor back of the control stand. The trim tab itself appears unimportant compared with the area which it controls, but it is essential in maintaining the airplane in a desired flight direction. Hinge bearings and bolts should be tight and properly keyed. The control wheels which operate the elevator trim tabs are located at the base of control span. These trim tabs balance the airplane in horizontal flight. Screws securing the tab hinge are examined. Also the metal skin covering. Joint bearings are inspected for possible wear. Neutral position of tab is compared with the position of the tab control indicator. Turning the wheel on the control column raises one aileron and simultaneously lowers the aileron on the opposite wing. Here again, all hinges and moving parts are given a thorough inspection. There is but one aileron trim tab and it is located on the left aileron. This tab is controlled by turning a knob on the left of the pilot's seat. The control column is moved back and forth to determine the working condition of the elevator control. A broken pulley or a frayed cable could jam the elevator control system. Full free movement of elevators, which is necessary, should be determined after all hinges and joints have been inspected in the usual manner. Neutral position of the elevators is checked. 
to make certain that both elevator surfaces are at identical angles. Entering an inboard nacelle, the mechanic examines the engine controls. The engine and flight control cables have previously been checked for free movement. Now, it is necessary to examine each one and test for tension or wear. All pulleys are also inspected. Misalignment of cables passing through holes in the nacelle will cause wear and fray. The emergency exit allows easy access to all control cables beneath the cockpit. Beneath the cockpit, the cables branch out to various parts of the airplane. Every pulley should be given individual inspection. They must be hand-tested for loose bends and loose pulley bolts. In the control column shaft are aileron cable pulleys. A hand inspection can determine their addition. Also, the condition of the aileron cables at that point. Practically every foot control cable in the flying fortress is accessible to the inspector. During the 25-hour inspection, the entire cable system must be examined thoroughly. Proper cable tension is important. Excessive tension will cause abnormal pull wear and stiff operation of controls. Frayed cables result in binding and possible jang in the pulleys and pulley brackets. There are over 400 pulleys and drums and a total of nearly 600 feet of cable in the control system, exclusive of trim tab controls. The hydraulic control panel is the center of the hydraulic system. The strainer on the panel is cleaned by turning clockwise. The hydraulic system is comprised of hundreds of feet of tubing passing through walls and bulkheads to various parts of the ship. Installation of this tubing necessitates the use of many compression couplings. If it is necessary to tighten a leaky coupling, avoid twisting or straining of tubing. Wrenches used must fit coupling nuts. While other members of the inspection crew are checking the hydraulic fluid supply, this mechanic carefully goes over all the tubing. Not until every coupling and tube has been inspected and tightened, where necessary, will the careful crew mechanic put his OK on the inspection form. Hydraulic pressure operates brakes and cowl flaps. The cowl flaps should open within three to five seconds. Spasmodic or jerky operation is generally caused by air lines. This air can be bled out by disconnecting lines at the actuating cylinder on the engine and opting the flaps through one cycle. Normally operated by an electric motor, the wing flaps are the airplane's brakes. They reduce the flying speed of the fortress when coming in for a landing. The operation of the flap limit switches and security of their electrical connections shall be inspected. When the wing flaps are down, hinges and joints are accessible for inspection. The flap position indicator on the instrument board shows the position of flaps. The position, as shown by this indicator, should be checked against flap position. All surfaces of flaps are inspected for rock or water damage. The removable wing flap hand crank is located in the radio room. For manual operation of the flaps, it is inserted in a bearing on the radio room floor. A trap door is easily raised for accessibility. The wing flaps should be lowered to full open position when determining condition of hand operating mechanism. Raising the flap to the original closed position completes the wing flap inspection. By installing a hand operated system in addition to the electrically operated mechanism, the engineer has again provided for the emergency. Normal clearance between brake shoe and drum, front and rear, is 45 thousandths of an inch minimum. This clearance is checked by inserting a feeler gauge to openings provided for this purpose. It is extremely important that all hydraulic lines to the brakes be free of leaks. Leaks cause brake failure, which results in possible serious damage to the airplane.